What's up everyone, Adam from Cape Crawlers, and today we're taking a look at the brand new Hobby Plus CR18P Trail Hunter. Welcome back to the channel everybody. Got a fun video for you today. We got our hands on another new rig to check out. Today we're taking a look at the brand new Hobby Plus CR18P Trail Hunter or T-Hunter. This is a very cool, ready to run Unimog style build with a lot of great features, tons of bang for the buck. Only 120 bucks for this thing. Very cool. Comes in two different colors, comes in the green, comes in a sand color. We actually have the other color. We've got a sand one here. I'm actually gonna give this away. So stay tuned to the end of the video for the details of the giveaway. Now the T-Hunter is the second release on the CR18 platform. The first being the rock van that came out earlier this year. This is a little bit more of an emphasis on performance. It's got a really aggressive approach angle and departure angle portal axles, big tires, lots of cool stuff on this thing. So why don't we dive in and take a closer look at some of the key features in this thing, and then we'll do an unboxing and then we'll get to running it. So let's check it out. Let's get into this thing. So I've already opened it up, but I, I want to take a look at it. So when you open it up, here's what you got. There's the T-Hunter right there. You have your transmitter in here as well. We got our owner's manual and some tools. Let's take a look at what we get. So looking at the transmitter here real quick, this is the familiar transmitter that we've seen with the FCX24, with the Power Wagon, with the Max Smasher, a lot of other FMS models utilize the same four channel receiver. I love that it's got the switches here for the throttle function and your drag brake. I really appreciate that. We've got your basic trim function. So very familiar transmitter here. I love the size of this thing, really easy for one handed operation. I like, I like this transmitter a lot, so I'm, I was happy to see this. This is a good one. So we get our basic set of tools. You know, you get your battery charger. Comes with one battery pre-installed in the rig. We've got a little Phillips screwdriver, basic multi-tool nut driver here. Owner's manual. The one thing I do like about the owner's manual here, let's see if I can show you an example, is that it it's very comprehensive in that it has full exploded views of the rig and it's got your parts and your part numbers and everything up here in these diagrams. So I appreciate the level of detail that they've offered us here in this manual for the exploded diagrams and the part numbers and all that. That's cool. I like that a lot. So detailed diagrams and things there. The actual owner's manual itself, it's just a fold out you know, like map style fold out piece of paper, but it's got everything you need, troubleshooting, quick start guide, you know, all that good stuff is in here. Let's take a look at the rig itself. So I, I really like how this thing looks. So I've been scoping out a bunch of other video reviews on this thing, but seeing it in person, I like how it looks in person. I am shocked that this thing is only 120 bucks. I mean, it's got it's a, it's a Lexan body, it's a plastic, but you do get mirrors with glass in them. You get door handles, you get a snorkel, you get this nice grill guard on here. You know, it just has a really nice look and fit and finish to it. So I like the body, I like the chassis design itself. The, the Unimog style is just cool. It's a cool looking rig, especially in the army green. It just works really well. The tires, yeah, their tires are nice and soft. They feel really good. It feels like there's a light foam in here. Now this is a 1.2 inch wheel and a really soft compound tire. I actually really like these tires a lot. And you get you know, a full size functional spare on the back. These are also beadlock wheels, true beadlock wheels. So you can break them down, take these tires off, swap them out if you want. It's got the same hex size as you know, your common hex sizes you can put you know, the SCX24 one inch wheels on here easy enough and you've got plenty of clearance for big tires and wheels, which is awesome. So we'd actually put a one inch wheel on here, it'd be a smaller wheel and you could put a bigger tire on here, no problems, plenty of clearance. I like it's got some fake jerry cans in the back here. One of the things that's neat about this is that they've used this cargo box in the back here for your battery tray. So you pop that open, this is where your battery and your connection sit and then here's your power switch here so no more opening up the body taking off the body to get to your battery or your power switch it's externally located 
which I thought was very cool for ease of access and ease of use. I do find that the cover is pretty tricky to put back on. You know, my son and I really kind of struggled with this, getting it situated back on the rig. There's two tabs in the back. You got to kind of line those up and then kind of force it in place. I think that's on. Yes. So that's one of the things that was really appealing on paper, but the practicality of it is, I, don't know, I mean, for me, kind of non-existent. I mean, after a couple of experiences like that, I'd wished I just had the magnetic body like the Atlas six by six or some sort of comparable way to get into it. Water resistant does come with the 600 milliamp 2S battery. So it pre-installed. It's got the coilover suspension at all four corners. These are composite shocks, friction damped, no oil option in these. So like other friction damped spring shocks, they are a little bouncy. We've got an aluminum chassis chassis mounted servo with a pan hard bar. We've got four link suspension in the back and a three link front. It's got an all new portal design, portal axle design, front and rear. These portals come with metal gears throughout. So you've got metal gears in both the portals and in the diffs. The ground clearance on this thing with the portal axles and the big tires on it, it's got massive ground clearance. And the approach angle, 64 degree approach angle and an 80 degree departure angle, this thing means business. And I can imagine if you put bigger tires on it, you could increase those angles even more. So I really like the performance aspect that they've done with this thing. And it's evident in just how it looks and how it stands. Touching on performance, this thing is powered by a 50 sized, 55 turn brushed motor, made it up to a single speed high torque transmission. Power is delivered to the wheels via splined plastic drive shafts front and back. Let's do a quick size comparison. So the T-Hunter is an 18 scale. So here it is against the Firehorse 18th scale Jeep Wrangler clone. So you see very comparable in size. When you look at it against another 18th scale rig, it's actually more compact than I thought it would be. Looking at this on its own, it looks long, but when you see it against another 18th scale rig, it's, it's actually kind of squished more so than I initially thought. The body sits a little bit higher. Obviously you're gonna get that with the portal axles. Not tremendously higher though. Here it is against TRX 4M Bronco. Now this is my very highly modified Bronco. So it, it does sit a little bit lower. It is much wider than a stock TRX 4M, but just kind of gives you an idea from a wheelbase perspective and an overall size perspective. Here it is against an SCX 24. Now this is my C10. Again, the C10 is really wide, but this gives you an idea from the scale. It's actually, you know, looking at the Trail Hunter, it feels more comparable to a 24 scale than it does to an 18th scale. I almost think it looks small compared to the 18th scale rigs. It looks right in line with the SCX 24. So that's kind of interesting. So it is smaller than I initially thought. And seeing it with the SCX 24, it feels more at home with those size rigs than with the 18th scales. That's interesting. All right, now let's have some fun and run this thing. Here we are on the course. While we're here, let's do some vertical climbing. Look pretty good. On the other side now, let's try out the escalator. It's got real good slow speed control. Feels really good. Mini Moab's getting real tricky. There we go. Getting some understeer. It's kind of pushing off the side of that course here. So we understeered straight off the course. Now we're back on. I was saying Mini Moab's getting really challenging. Super slick here. 
in the early stages of this obstacle. Yeah, it was an effort, but we made it. Try to utilize the slow crawl ability of this thing to see if we can creep up this obstacle. Trail Hunter, you got it. Yeah, we made it. Over on Hell's Gate now. Get some lift over there. Oh, just struggling a little bit. Keep in mind, it's a stock rig right out of the box. And Mini Moab, like I said, very challenging right now because of how slick everything is. We'll get a couple more tries here. I'm just stuck right on this tricky spot right here. There we go. That extra ground clearance from the portals, it's able to kind of glide over that really tricky spot that hangs up a lot of rigs. Try a little bit of a different line here. We got so close, I'm determined to make it up Hell's Gate here. Oh, it's so close. Oh, all right, so I don't think Hell's Gate's gonna happen today now with the stock rig I'll keep trying see if I can figure out the line, but let's just play around and have some fun with this thing There's those awesome approach and departure angles, able to come down from rock chucker there pretty easily. I'm really impressed with the slow crawl from this thing. It's quiet, it's smooth, that really good control. That 50 size motor, it's got plenty of power for this thing, it feels like. Single speed crawler transmission seems to work really good. Love that approach angle, that's a big one there. It's another one too. Look at that, be able to clear that obstacle. Here's where that tight turning radius will help too. And the portal axles give it the ground clearance to get up over that tricky spot as well. So this thing crawls really good. I would thought it would have been more top heavy, but it actually behaves pretty well. Man, it's getting a little bit lean here, but it's holding on. There we go, we got it.
Love having the adjustability for the drag brake on the transmitter. You know, that really helps to be able to control that, customize it. That's a great feature of this thing. Some departure angle, mighty impressive there. Get the low speed crawl out of this thing, man. great see some side hill here these are some pretty gnarly off cambers and some pretty impressive angles feels pretty planted I, I love having the confidence to be able to just power through things knowing that this has the metal gears and the both in the portals and in the gearboxes, you know, just being able to have that peace of mind to really run this thing hard and stress it out. I like that a lot. Final thoughts on the T Hunter. I like this rig a lot. It's something cool, it's something different. I love the Unimog style. I think it's a very cool looking rig and it's a great addition to the fleet. My son loves it. The army green, man, he went nuts when he saw this thing. So I really like the kind of military, tough, rugged looking styling of it. It's got a great look to it. Performance is really good out of the box. I thought it was gonna be more top heavy than it is. It's actually very planted and feels really good crawling around. On our course, it did really good on the vertical climbs. Struggled a little bit on mini Moab, but everything is struggling on mini Moab right now because it's just super technical and super challenging. This thing could really benefit from some extra weight down low and I think that would make a huge difference. One of the things that really stood out to me from a performance perspective was how smooth the ESC and the power curve is. It's very, very good slow crawl ability right out of the box. One of the most impressive setups that I've felt from a brushed motor. Very, very smooth, very controlled, nice and torquey, lots of power down low and just super easy to control. So I really appreciated how this thing delivers its power. And it's nice and quiet, doesn't have a lot of noise. The ESC doesn't whine or anything like that. It's just nice and smooth, feels really good and fun to drive. The steering angle is great. You know, this has the 45 degree steering angle, which gives it a real tight turning radius despite the longer wheelbase. I don't think it turns as tight as the TRX 4M. I should have done a comparison side by side to look at the turning radius. And I'll probably do that in a future video, but just from anecdotally looking at it and driving it, it didn't feel like it had the same tight turning radius that the TRX 4M does. It does turn really well though, nonetheless. The approach angle and the departure angles are no joke. This thing can hit some pretty gnarly angles right out of the box, which is great. So it was able to tackle a lot of the vertical climbs and some of the more technical obstacles on Mini Moab in our indoor course pretty easily, which was great. So. That was mighty impressive. So it does have a big emphasis on performance right out of the box, and that's evident when you drive it. So let's talk about some of the challenges that I ran into with this thing. It did struggle a little bit on the vertical climbs on the indoor course, not so much because it was top heavy, but it felt like the tires were really struggling. I really like these tires, these 1.2 inch wheels and these nice soft tires, but they didn't work out too well on our course and I didn't really get an opportunity to test them outdoors. So I can't really say how they fare out on rocks and other types of terrain, but I did struggle with them on the indoor course. I think it could really benefit from a softer tire setup, something with a little more squish, maybe something wider to give it a little more of a footprint. This has nothing to do with performance, but man, I struggled with that battery cover. I love the premise. I love the concept of having the battery and the power switch externally located. It's really convenient and makes a lot of sense but practicality of that 
I have a horrible time trying to get that lid of the battery box back together. Hopefully it's something that I get used to and it becomes easier through use, but the two or three times that I encountered it in this last couple days that I've had it, it was a real struggle. The biggest issue I ran into was that I already stripped out the transmission gears. So while it, this thing is great and it has metal portal gears and has metal differentials, you're reinforced in that regard, which makes the weak link in the chain the transmission because you've still got composite gears in the transmission. And it was within an hour or so that we heard that fast ticking, grinding sound in the transmission. I knew exactly what had happened. So it was a bummer that we did that and it got progressively worse. So I didn't get a chance to take it outdoors or run it as much as I wanted to because it stripped pretty bad to the point where it virtually any force that it comes up against, it just, you know, you, you just get that clicking and the grinding sound and it doesn't go anywhere. So that's a bummer, but I will give a shout out to Fair RC who immediately jumped on it and is helping me out and sending me some free upgrade parts and some replacement parts. So great customer service on their part. And I'm really grateful for that. And I'm really looking forward to trying this thing out when we get the metal transmission gears in here. So I would say if you do purchase this, I would throw in your cart, the metal transmission gears at the same time. You're going to want that extra peace of mind to know that you can put this thing to the test and really utilize its capabilities without the transmission failing on you. But all in all, really impressed with it. I, I really like it. It's fun to look at. It's fun to drive. Very capable. For $120, it's an awesome rig. So I'm very impressed with what you get for that price point. It's a great little crawler. Now let's get to the fun part. And I know if you stuck around for the giveaway details, Fair RC was generous enough to send us over two of these things, and I'm going to give away one of them. So the rules are, you just have to be a subscriber to our channel and also to Fair RC's channel. No specific comment requirements or tagging or anything like that. Just subscribe to both of our channels and I'll pick a winner in seven days. So whenever this video comes out, I think it's going to be on Sunday. The following Sunday, I'll announce the giveaway winner and I'll send you over the sand colored tea hunter. Well, that's going to wrap up the video today. Let me know your thoughts down below what you think of the tea hunter It's a very cool rig. I want to know your thoughts for sure, what you guys think of it, and also what we should do for mods. You know I can't leave this thing stock, so we're going to dive into it and see what we can get out of it for capabilities. As always, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so. Remember to subscribe to Fair RC to be entered into the giveaway, and we'll announce it next week. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next video.